Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seam Lund, and in this video, we're going to talk about the oldest living person in history, John Calment. Jean Calm. And yeah, we're going to talk about why did you live so long? Did you actually live that long? And yeah, what are the things that we can take away? So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it. John Louise Calment uh, is from France. She was born in 21st of February 1875 and she died at the 4th of August 1997. So she's a super centenarian and she is considered at least the most documented uh, oldest person in history. And she lived until 122 years and 164 days, which is uh, quite a long time. And yeah, most, let's say, they, they think that the human maximum, uh, human longevity is like 125 years or something. And yeah, she nearly uh, maxed it out, <laughs> almost maxed it out. There is like some uh, controversy about uh, whether or not uh, John Clement actually lived that long. So uh, there was this uh, Russian scientist a few years ago who came out with a paper that said that, um, that John Clement actually died in like 1934 and her daughter basically uh, faked being her. And uh, if that would be the case, then that uh, that daughter is still pretty old. Like she, she would have died at 99 years old. But uh, currently the most of the uh, longevity people and uh, most of the... Uh, let's say scientists do think that uh, Jean Clement actually did live uh, that long, that uh, she was the one uh, who, uh, who, uh, who didn't die at 1934 and she died at 1997. So she lived actually longer than her uh, daughter as well as her uh, grandson, which is, you know, unfortunate and amazing at the same time. So what is the reason why did she live so long? Uh, Clement's remarkable health presaged her later record. Uh, on television, she stated, I've never been ill, never ever. All her life, she took care of her skin with olive oil and a puff of powder. At an unspecified time in her youth, she had suffered from migraines. Her husband introduced her to smoking, offering cigarettes after meals, but she didn't smoke more. After the meal, after just one, I'd had enough of it. Comment continued smoking in her elderly years until she was 117 uh, years old. Which is, you know, <laughs> pretty crazy to think about and a lot of people would associate smoking with accelerated aging and uh, shorter lifespans, increasing the risk of cancers and heart disease and that sort of thing. So it is yeah, quite uh, mysterious that the oldest living person in history smoked <laughs> until the age of 117. Name something that gets passed around. A joint. A joint. <laughs> For example, like smoking, cigarette smoke causes oxidative stress to the body and that can like turn on some of these, uh, let's say, defense systems in the body as well, like the antioxidant defenses, as well as like the autophagy gets increased uh, when you get ex exposed to some of like uh, smoke and cigarette smoke. She also probably had like a lower genetic risk for a heart disease and cancer, uh, which would have allowed her to get away with smoking and not get cancer and uh, not get uh, heart disease. Uh, at retirement age, she broke her ankle, but before that, had never suffered any major injuries. She continued cycling until her 100th birthday. Uh, around age 100, she fractured her leg, but recovered quickly and was able to walk again. Which is, you know, <laughs> quite crazy. Like most uh, older people um, get osteoporosis and uh, frailty, and usually if you have like lack of muscle mass and lack of uh, bone density, or muscle strength as well, then uh, getting a hip fracture is almost like a death sentence because uh, you become immobile and you're not able to recover from that. You uh, become sedentary, you're not moving around, you get diabetes, you get uh, neurodegeneration because of that. So yeah, the, the bone frailty is actually pretty dangerous to uh, older people, you know, for everyone, but uh, especially older people because they're not able to recover from that uh, that easily. Double dose in the hip. Seated on her armchair, she did gymnastics wearing her stereo headset. <laughs> her exercises included flexing and extending the hands, then the legs. Nurses noted that uh, she moved faster than other residents who were 30 years younger. Uh, her breakfast consisted of coffee with milk and rusks. So yeah, physical exercise is obviously important. And, you know, she's uh, 110 years old. She can't lift weights, probably. <laughs> Although maybe she could do like some resistance bands or something. But any kind of gymnastics generally uh, does have like some stimulation on the uh, muscles. And and uh, it kind of keeps the uh, muscles activated to a certain extent. She doesn't need like a lot of resistance because I would imagine like her strength isn't that high. And any kind of movement itself would get the blood flowing, would activate the muscle fibers, etc, etc. So just the movement itself is uh, pretty important. Uh, she could have also used things like, you know, um, let's say if, 
in 2021, if she were to be in like in a biohacking nursing home, then she could have used like these electrical muscle stimulation devices as well, which uh, do work, you know, uh, at least in activating the muscles. They're not going to make you jacked and uh, make you build muscle a ton, but they do help you to maintain muscle, especially if you're, uh, you know, 110 years old. She could have used those uh, EMS uh, devices or like the blood flow restriction bands. So what about her breakfast? Uh, coffee, milk and rusks. So rusks are these kinds of... Uh, dry biscuit or bread type of cubes. Okay, for lunch, she uh, enjoyed braised beef or uh, dobe, which is quite basically like some kind of a crock pot uh, type of a stew, a beef stew, uh, but was not keen on boiled fish. So yeah, like, uh, you know, obviously very important to have like adequate in intake of protein, especially if you're uh, old, because protein helps to maintain muscle mass. And it's also like very uh, high source of all these nutrients. She had dessert with every meal and said that given a choice, uh, she would eat fried and spicy foods instead of the bland foods on the menu. Uh, so she made herself a daily fruit salads with bananas and oranges. She enjoyed chocolate, sometimes indulging in a kilogram per week. <laughs> so that's a, yeah, she uh, didn't have like, you know, clean diet. She didn't eat a vegan diet. She didn't eat a keto diet. She didn't eat any kind of a, any kind of a special diet. Uh, she eat, yeah, like whole foods. Uh, with ex except maybe like chocolate and uh, the uh, bread, but yeah, basically uh, it goes goes to show again that um, the food in or the food component itself has a very little impact on the particular longevity. Most of it has to do with uh, calorie restriction uh, because your body can deal with uh, almost any kind of foods as long as you stay in a calorie de de calorie def deficit state. Uh, if you are eating less calories, then it doesn't matter if it is like some kind of bad food or not the healthiest food because the calorie restriction kind of nullifies it out or at least mitigates some of the effects. Diabetes. After the meal, she smoked a Dunhill cigarette and drank a small amount of port wine. So uh, she uh, smoked as well as uh, drank some wine and uh, ate some chocolate. And yeah, she was living uh, like a very hedonistic diet <laughs> almost. Uh, in the afternoon, she would take a nap for two hours in her armchair and then visit her neighbors in the care home, telling them about the latest news she had heard on the radio. Uh, at nightfall, she would dine quickly, return to her uh, room, listen to music, uh, smoke a last cigarette, and go to bed at 10 p.m. A joy. <laughs> her height was 150 centimeters, uh, 4 feet 11 inches, and her weight 45 kilograms, 99 pounds, showing little variation from uh, previous years. So um, that is, uh, I think, a more important point because uh, she wasn't a big person. She was uh, quite short and didn't weigh a ton. Uh, and uh, I think that is... Something that you see in nature as well, that the uh, some of the longest living organisms in the world, they're not elephants, they're not like massive uh, animals, they're not huge. And you know, even like dogs, uh, like larger dogs die a lot sooner than smaller dogs. And maybe that has to do with, again, like a larger body, your heart experiences more stress, has to pump more blood. You have to consume more calories to maintain that mass or larger body weight. Whereas if you're shorter and uh, with less body weight, you uh, basically have to, um, yeah, you cause less burden on the digestive system, etc., etc., because you're not eating that many calories as a whole. The reason why my shirt is too small is because I'm too big. So there you have it. As you can see, there are many things that uh, could contribute to uh, John Clement's uh, longevity. I think that a lot of it has to do with genetics, because uh, you know she apparently had some uh, lower IQ1 levels, maybe lower growth hormone levels, uh, lower risk of ca cancer and heart disease, etc., etc. So uh, yeah, she uh, just just because of that, she could have just uh, lived a few decades longer than the average person. But let me know in the comments, do you think that uh, Joan Clement was actually the one who lived until 122 years old? Or was it her daughter that faked her and pretended to be her? Also click like and subscribe for future videos as well. Thanks for watching, my name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.